with the crystal lens a zing of the lens is quite bothersome and creates high astigmatism. Here we're making our primary incisions for entry into the eye in this Z lens. This lens was so extremely tilted that there were four diopters of astigmatism and the patient's uncorrected visual acuities were 2200. In this uh, initial foray I'm getting the eye set up to look around basically. This is the uh, endo ocular cyclophotocoagulator but I just use the endo optics to take a careful look underneath the uh, iris to see what's going on. Now you might see over here on the left that it looks as though part of the haptic may be hung up on the capsule and lo and behold when we look with our endoscope there it is. It actually popped over the capsule and was um, causing the lens to Z because the haptics were not in the fornix. Then I go to the other side uh, just to see how those haptics look and clearing um, the um, fibers here um, in trying to relax the capsule. I use a hand over hand technique, introduce a cutting forceps um, separating the anterior and posterior leaflets carefully before cutting away the secondary membrane which is also causing the lens to Z. These traction sort of like a muscle flexion cause the lens to enter into the Z position. There's no need really to remove it. Um, often by removing these fibrous membranes or reinflating the bag and in this case the patient is almost two years out from surgery he had never seen well out of this eye the surgeon had done several capsulotomies and actually tried to re reposition the lens intraoperatively also but here you can see the haptic is in front of the anterior capsular leaflet we're carefully dissecting because wherever those haptics are there's usually strong membranes and I'm teasing those away here to get the haptic freed. My decision usually is to try to get the haptic back into the bag however the lateral haptic here on the right side of your field is so fibrosed that I felt the best way to manage this actually was to investigate using the endoscope again to see what the position of those haptics were. And they were in good position but extremely fibrosed and a year out it gets a little difficult. We did tease away and try to see if we could remove them but there really be no change in that side of the eye. Uh, sometimes I'll rotate a lens 90 degrees uh, to get away from the most fibrous part of the capsule but in this case we were just tearing zonules and it didn't look like an effective method. So we went back to our incarcerated side and made a decision to put it in the sulcus. These lenses are not to be placed in the sulcus initially however in this case once we've removed all the fibrosis and the right side of the lens in this uh, view is fibrosed into the capsular bag Placing the left side of the haptic into the sulcus seemed to be a reasonable alternative. And we're spending most of our time removing the adhesions. And I have never had to remove a lens definitively. I will sometimes remove them and replace them with another crystal lens. Uh, often I can just break the synechiae, remove the fibrous membranes, and uh, voila, the lens is in good position. Well, this was uh, quite extraordinary because um, there was really minimal amount of vitreous coming forward. Now we're looking at both sides again with our endoscope to see uh, where vitreous might be present. Once we've determined that vitreous is coming around the edge of the lens and I've verified that that lens is in the sulcus, we replace our chamber maintainer, introduce a vitrector, and remove all traces of vitreous using the Seepser luminary light on the right which is a shielded luminary probe uh, that is uh, made by Escalon Trek um, which is designed for just this anterior segment work. Um, then we hydrate the wounds um, and 
do the uh, seeps betadine test which uh, assures us that there is closure of every wound and they're watertight um, this allows us to be sure that we are going our way to a good result of course dropless here even for reoperations placing uh, the trimoxy in this case uh, allows these patients to recover quickly